Um, now, why hydrogen is important, we have to go to the very beginning before even mitochondria understand this. So our mitochondria evolved from something called eukaryotes, right? Those first eukaryotes actually expelled hydrogen gas as a waste product. Before that, the eukaryotes formed uh, as a symbiotic relationship between two organelles. One was a bacteria that actually consumed hydrogen as its fuel. So hydrogen has been with us, been with our mitochondria since before mitochondria even existed. Now, throughout the last you know, couple billion years, there has been vastly different levels of hydrogen gas in the atmosphere and in the water. Um, for instance, the oldest water that has ever been found deep beneath the Canadian Shield still has detectable levels of hydrogen gas in it. Now, none of the water in the planet does anymore unless uh, you know there, there's some thermal venting going on that, that gets hydrogen there. So that, that's another interesting anecdote. But the most important thing about why we're deficient in hydrogen and why it's important to take exogenously is throughout all of human evolution, we would have consumed well over 100 grams of fiber per day. Now, we produce hydrogen gas endogenously by fermenting fiber. Today, the average person gets 14 grams of fiber a day. So we're getting a fraction of the fiber needed to produce H2 endogenously to get to our internal organs as we have throughout all of evolution. But what makes matters worse is because of these lifestyle changes, our microbiome has drastically changed, right? So when we actually do hydrogen breath tests, we give someone a fiber like lactulose and do a hydrogen breath test. Research indicates that upwards between 60 to 80% of people, depending on the study, especially those who are middle-aged and overweight, produce no hydrogen gas at all. Wow. They're fermenting the fiber and producing methane. Repeat so, that again, especially which, which demographic of people? Um, middle-aged, overweight. Okay. Middle-aged okay. and older and overweight. You know, if you're hit, hitting your 30s and you're overweight, you may not produce any hydrogen even when you get fiber. So yeah, even if they take the fiber, they're still not producing it because uh, I, I would Their imagine there's dysbiosis in the yeah. gut. So they don't, they don't have those hydrogen producing species in abundant enough numbers. Exactly. Because a healthy microbiome relies on this ebb and flow of H2. A lot of uh, the bacteria produces hydrogen through this, you know, fermenting uh, fiber and other bacteria is consuming hydrogen. So this dysbiosis can, can go either ways. You know, some people can sick because they're just producing crazy amounts of hydrogen all the time way more than you could ever take you know as a supplement other people produce no hydrogen at all now what we're learning about hydrogen is it plays some very very important roles in the body one it's an adapted stressor so similar to exercise cold exposure fasting heat exposure we've anticipated to expect these spikes of h2 in our cell you know h2 saturates our cells and then goes down it's basically kind of like exercise for our mitochondria, something called the mitohormetic factor. So it stresses out the cell for a very short amount of time. Our, our mitochondria gets stronger, it produces more mitochondria, it, it to improves the performance of the mitochondria we already have, and it leads to positive cellular adaptations. So for instance, hydrogen has shown to positively impact like over 10,000 gene expressions. It's shown positive impacts in every organ in the body across about 180 different you know, disease and non-disease models, you know, through over 2,000 publications. And I think about 170 clinical trials to date. So the evidence is getting very, very strong. And if I could boil down what hydrogen seems to do the best, it seems to be our master regulator for stress response. So for instance, um, most of the research, a lot of the research, a lot of the marketing talks about hydrogen is like, you know, an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. But it isn't. Mm -hmm. it, it regulates our production of antioxidants and also beneficial pro-oxidative and nitrogen stressors. This leads to something called redox homeostasis. It's the harmony between you know, our oxidative stress and our antioxidants. Because you can go into reductive stress too by too many antioxidants, right? And that's just as harmful as oxidative stress.